this adventure, we're heading to Michigan's Manistee National Forest, which encompasses more than a half a million acres. We ventured into the forest and occasionally out of it to discover some fun things. It's interesting what you'll find when you're out boondocking. Our first boondocking set, we were trying to find one overlooking the Tippy Dam Pond. We didn't really want to start off our trip by getting stuck, so we parked the vehicles in a nice camping spot and hiked the rest of the way to the pond. For those who did venture through the mud hole, the campsite views overlooking Government Island were well worth the effort. We enjoyed hiking along the Manistee River starting at the Hoden Pile Dam after crossing the river on the suspension bridge. We enjoyed the beautiful day listening to the excitement of the birds and even hearing the sound of falling water from a small hidden waterfall along the trail. This hike is part of a 15 mile loop but you can enjoy any length hike you want with an out and back track.
21 miles northwest of the town of Manistee, you'll find the town of Kaliba. This town is well known for the Bottle House, which is currently the home of the Kaliba Historical Museum. John Mackinnon was the owner of the Northwestern Bottling Works and found the bottles manufactured there had an insulation factor against cold, causing beverages not to freeze in the winter. He decided to use the flawed and chipped bottle set aside during inspection to build a house in 1941. The construction uses over 60,000 bottles laid on their sides with the bottoms toward the exterior. It's also said that the term pop to describe what others outside the Midwest call soda, soft drinks, or coke was first used here. Early bottling techniques were to seal beverages and bottles with a cork, which could not always withstand the pressure of the carbonation that would make a pop sound. Just a few miles from the town of Brotherton is where you'll find our favorite campsite on this trip. Located at the end of the Forest Service Road, the site offers plenty of space for several campsites. A short walk down the steep bank gives you access to the Manistee River. A beautiful campfire gives a perfect ending to an almost perfect day. Quick 93 miles north brought us to the town of Charlevoix to hunt for the perfect Petoskey stone. It's not too often that you see Lake Michigan smooth as glass. You can hardly tell where the water ends and the sky begins. The calm water makes looking for stones in the clear water easier and for skipping stones. Perfect Petoskey Stone is still there somewhere if you look, as we didn't find it. Don't miss out on your piece of the world's largest cherry pie on US Highway 31 in Charlevoix. In 1976, local farmers supplied the ingredients and the result was 17,420 pounds of pure Michigan cherry pie. Egg wash and sugar was distributed on top of the pie crust using a helicopter. It held the honors until its neighbor 50 miles to the south, Traverse City, beat the record in 1987. Today it stands as the memorial to the world's third largest cherry pie.
Venturing a little further north into Charlevoix, don't miss the mushroom houses. These unique houses were built in the 1920s and 30s by architect Earl Young. Locals either love them or hate them. I think they're kind of cool. When one goes up for sale, it doesn't stay on the market for long. Please enjoy the beauty of the houses from the sidewalk and respect the property owner's privacy as this is their home. This boondocking site is located about four miles from the town of Dublin, just outside the Pine River Corridor. The river was off in the distance at the bottom of the valley with us camping on the hilltop. Upon further investigation, the better campsite would have been a little further down the road with a viewing bench offering the perfect view of the Pine River below. Enjoy the sounds of the great horned owl close by and the coyotes in the distance during the night. There had been quite a lot of rain over the past week or so, and you can see that the Pine River is overflowing its banks and turning the normally clear water into a clouded mud mix. Please remember to be responsible and pick up after yourself so that others will be able to enjoy these public lands in the future. We will certainly be back at some point to do more boondocking in the Manassee National Forest and find even better boondocking sites. Until next time.